What's going on guys? Aaron from PhoneDog.com here and I know you've been waiting for this one and now that CTIA is over, well here it is, the HTC Thunderbolt. Full review, 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor, 8 megapixel camera on the back with dual LED flashes, 1.3 megapixel front facing camera so you can, you know, shoot those MySpace pictures and do all those MySpace curves like you wild individuals do. Kickstand on the back, you can't hate on the kickstand. Capacitive buttons on the bottom. Android 2.2 with the newest version of HTC Sense. And best of all, it's running 4G LTE. It's actually Verizon's first phone to have LTE capabilities. So it's running a super fast network. Is this the device to have, or should you hold off for something like the LG Revolution or the Samsung 4G LTE device, which you know we think is going to be called the Charge? Which one should you get? We'll find out in the full review. If you hear lightning outside, well, it's because the HTC Thunderbolt has finally launched. You know, it's a new, <laughs> I knew I could make one more bad joke out of that. Anyway, one gigahertz processor, let's go through some of the specs really quickly. One gigahertz processor, uh, and actually while I'm thinking about that, I don't know if I can drink this. This is a cup of coffee I've been drinking out of all morning and it has Sprint on it. So I feel like it's kind of a conflict of interest, but, uh, but I'm gonna keep drinking it because I need more caffeine. So first of all, special thanks to our friends at Verizon for hooking us up with a review unit. But anyway, you know, awesome device, $249.99, at Verizon with a two-year agreement, $599.99, which is a little bit expensive, but still, uh, if you're buying it full retail. So, it's the first device outside of the data cards to support Verizon's new 4G LTE network, and uh, which, if you know, if you do care about it, it's running in the 700 megahertz spectrum. So, it's intended to be this beachfront spectrum where, if you walk into a building with somebody like an HTC Evo 4G, which I'll plan to do a dogfight in the coming days. But, uh, you know, 4G on Sprint, 2,500 megahertz, 4G on Verizon, 700 megahertz. Theoretically, the lower the megahertz, the easier it is to go into the building. You know, the higher it is, the harder it is to penetrate the building. Anyway, let's talk about the specs of this device. 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor, 4.3 inch display, 1.3 megapixel front facing camera up here. And on the back, you have your 8 megapixel camera with a dual LED flash. Now, you have the kickstand. It's a little bit bigger than the one, the Evo. And I'm going to compare this several times in the video to the Evo and the Inspire because really, you know, save for some design changes, they're all very similar in a lot of ways. Speaker on the back and uh, kickstand there with Google written on the side. Now you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top, power button, you have your uh, nothing on that side, microphone, and then on the, uh, the bottom right hand side, your micro USB charging port. No HDMI, uh, port on this device. Let's pull out the battery. It's 1400 milliamp battery. I just want to show you what it looks like. Battery on the back. SIM card slot down here. I don't want to pull it out because it'll turn it off. Micro SD actually up here and it comes pre-installed like I said with a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. So you get a lot of storage out of the box and uh, you know the design it's a little bit thicker than the Evo. It actually feels heavier but it's not but it is a little bit thicker. It is running Android 2.2 with HTC Sense, and it's actually running HTC Sense 2.0. Uh, say that three times fast. HTC Sense 2.0, which uh, enables some cool customizations that 1.5, which is what the Evo is running, does not. So you look at this, for example, you'll notice the button down here has changed to where you can do some personalization, and it's not that it's that different, but one of my favorites is instead of going with that stock HTC, uh, skin on the home screen, you can switch it up. So if you want to go to metal, for example, we'll apply that. It'll change around some of the color schemes and then you can, uh, you'll see the background changes as well. And so there are some customization options you get in this that you don't get on the Evo 4G. Now the one place where the Inspire, AT&T's Inspire pulls ahead is it has the full rendition of HTC Sense 2.0. Verizon's kind of locked some of this down. And if you remember back to my video, and if you don't, don't worry, we're going to do a dog fight, but in the coming days, but if you remember back to my video on the uh, on the Inspire, where it says skins, apply is over here, and then you have the option to get more skins, which you can connect to the HTC store and uh, and grab some extra skins. So Verizon's locked that down. It's not as customizable as the Inspire, but you, you still get these options. Widgets as well, but before I get into the widgets, let's see what's installed on this device. This is one of the kind of downsides of this device. There's a ton of uh, preloaded applications on this device. Adobe Reader, Bitbop, Blockbuster, City ID. Uh, let me just look at some of the non-Google stuff. Let's Golf. Uh, let's see. Rhapsody. Rock Band Slacker. Tune Wiki. Vcast Apps. Vcast Media. VZ Navigator. Uh, and then, you know, not counting little things like Kindle, which is really not, you know, but, but still, you get the idea. A lot of stuff pre-installed on this. You cannot remove those applications. So it is kind of frustrating, you know, to get this thing out of the box. You're like, brand new phone. Let me fill it up. 
and granted you have 40 gigabytes of storage space, but it's kind of frustrating to see all those apps. I don't know if you're like me, but just to see all those apps that you wish you could you know, uninstall just to conserve space, and uh, you can't because they're there no matter what you do. So, kind of frustrating. Anyway, you know, HTC Sense 2.0, despite the person or uh, the customization changes, you can, uh, I don't know why I'm having trouble talking today, customization changes, you can see that it's pretty much the same layout. Seven home screens, pinch to bring those out, pinch to bring one in, so if you want to go up here to this one, bring it in that way, and then of course you can do that by tapping home twice as well. Same weather widgets. Now a lot of this changes, if you saw the, uh, the Evo 3D video here at, uh, let me pull it in here so you can see it. If you saw the Evo 3D video at CTIA this week, you know, that's since 3.0. So there are a lot of uh, exciting changes that are coming from that uh, as well. Weather changes, really a ground up change as opposed to 2.0 being more of an evolutionary change from, e from uh, since 1.5. So you can see, you know, very similar there. But let's take a look at the widgets. And you can see when I press and hold instead of that little widget thing that you're used to on some of the other Android devices, it brings up this personalized menu. We can do a widget, for example, and I can browse all HTC widgets and I can get more as well. So this is one of those places where I can get some more HTC widgets, but still, you know, a lot of the personalization options. And you'll notice in the menu, I don't mean to keep going back, but you'll see that htcsense.com is not installed on this device. So you can't install that, so you don't get the benefits like the ability to ring the phone uh, if you've lost it, the ability to lock it, the ability to remote wipe it, and the ability to download some cool customized uh, content for, for the phone. So that is not there. But anyway, let's go back to the widgets and take a look. They're all the same widgets that you're used to from previous HTC devices and they're grouped the exact same way by HTC and by Android. So if you look at this you can see there are two calendar ones. For example, you can pick between HTC's or Android and you'll see that the HTC widgets as always they are very coordinated, they are very uh, beautiful, they look great and uh, you can see for example if I can get it on this one, the agenda widget I don't know why it's so hard. There we go. Okay. The agenda widget, you know, they all, they're very clean, they look great. The only downside is they do take up a lot of space. Like you see a favorites here, friend stream here, which is uh, HTC social aggregation software. You know, they do take up a lot of space, but still absolutely beautiful widgets. And in most uh, cases with HTC's widgets, you do get at least the option to use a smaller one. Before we get into a conversation about LTE, let's talk a little bit about the actual hardware specs. You know, this has a one gigahertz Snapdragon processor, and while it's single core, I've been very impressed with the speeds. I mean, absolutely fantastic. Little to no lag that I've seen whatsoever. I mean, you can see it loads and, you know, moves around pretty quickly. And I think the concern was when this device came out, you know, dual core processors are beginning to get more and more popular. NVIDIA is releasing them, even uh, uh, Qualcomm with the Snapdragon processor. They're releasing at one as well in the Evo 3D. It's a 1.2 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon processor. So all these processor companies are really jumping on this dual core bandwagon. And the concern was that uh, the Thunderbolt was going to age itself before it launched. You know, that it was only going to be around for two or three months and then going to be replaced by something like the Droid Bionic where it was just substantially faster. I don't know if that's the case. I mean, I've been really imp uh, impressed with the Thunderbolt. It uh, brings that 4.3 inch form factor that everybody loved on the Evo 4G. Uh, and later the Inspire brings it to the Verizon side. So I think there's definitely a market for it. That said, let me go back to uh, some Sense 2.0 stuff. You can see here the uh, the carousel up top, which is very, uh, very typical Sense 2.0 up there. Now, you know, a couple of other minor changes that I've picked up on, for example, I mean, other than, you know, minus the 2.0, the minor changes, it's really just like the Sense that you remember from a lot of these devices of the past. The one change I picked up on is uh, instead of grouping the numbers together by your missed calls and by your received calls, etc., it does put a balance in between those. So, for example, if I dial 611 and I hang up, you can see as soon as it pops up that it puts a separation between those. So I know which ones are my missed calls, which ones are my received calls, and then which ones are my contacts versus kind of a whole jumbled mess. I still don't like, and when this Still don't like, uh, I thought the second one was going to pop up, but let's just dial a fake number, for example, we'll hang up. And you can see what I'm talking about. It'll group those together, and then your contacts and more will be done here. I still don't like how it groups them at all, but, you know, it is a little bit better. But down here in the phone app, you can see exactly the same. You can go to all your contacts. You can see they do a good job with this. HTC really, really organizes this well. So in the case of Billy Bob, for example, I can scroll through here and see messages, mail, updates and events, gallery, call history, and more. So, you know, if I, if I really want to have a conversation with Billy Bob, I'm like, when did we last talk 
about cleaning out the shed or you know fill in the blank go to messages and uh, you can scroll through individual messages with Billy Bob and see where the message is about cleaning out the shed so pretty organized there let's take a look at the web browser and see and again you see portrait landscape very quick very responsive we'll load up phone dog.com let's see here phone dog dot com and while it's loading it should load up pretty quickly because I you know Charlotte is a 4G LTE market and one thing I have to give them credit about while that's loading they really did a good job with the expansion of LTE you know at least using this area as an example when as soon as you go you know four miles outside of the city limits Sprint's WiMAX cuts off T-Mobile's HSPA plus cuts off you know they're very they're very serious about within the city limits and within the city limits only whereas LTE does branch out they realize that the metropolitan areas not everybody lives in the city proper so it's nice that they uh, nice that they cut that or they uh, they included it you can see pinch to zoom pretty quick and you see why the flash ads are loading here this is Android 2.2 so obviously it comes with flash pinch to zoom reasonably very reasonably fast have had no issues whatsoever and then you can tap in or tap out tap in I feel like we're wrestling tap in tap out but you can see very quick portrait landscape orientation and again let's say you want to open a new page and then let's say you want to go back to phone dog so we'll see windows it gives you this nice little picturesque transition screen so all, all in all been pretty fast for me and even with a page you know that has a lot of content like phone dog you know up and down pretty quick I really haven't had any issues now of course that I'm saying that it is lagging a little bit but I haven't had any issues with my time while I'm using it but you can see apparently right now it's it's deciding to lag take that with a grain of salt you know I've been pleased with it uh, but you know occasionally I'm sure like any other device it does experience its slowdowns so now you see refresh RSS information up here you can add a subscription and then the menu very typical browser menu add bookmarks you can view your bookmarks and then you can go into the settings and more on the browser. So, you know, to me, 4G's been, the LTE's been pretty quick. That said, you know, in Orlando at CTA, if you saw my tweets or uh, any of my comments, I had some serious LTE issues. It kept going between LTE and 3G and then cutting down to 1X. Verizon service was not the best in Orlando, and I'm not sure if they're having an LTE issue or what's going on, but the, uh, the data speeds have not been fast at all lately and they seem to be very intermittent it'll be fast for like 15 minutes and then it'll die off for half you know two hours and then it'll come back for 30 minutes so I don't know if it's the strain of all the Thunderbolts being on the network or what but it's certainly uh, certainly pretty frustrating and it's not a good PR or it's not good PR for Verizon let's take a look at the messages and you can see two press and hold here add the text and we'll uh, we'll do the quick brown fox Quick, I'm gonna give him a shout out. The Quick Brown Fox is an awesome fan of Phone Dog. These keys, I find they're very spaced, very easy to use, and because the display is so large, you know the keys are very easy to type on. Of course, you can do it in portrait and in landscape mode as well. So you can use it whichever way. I happen to prefer portrait. Um, I'm not a big landscape fan, but you see the keys look nice. Let me go into uh, settings real quick, uh, really quickly, because I can't remember if this comes with swipe or not. I want to say it does, but I guess, okay, so it does not. I was wrong. I'm not a big swipe fan, so I don't check uh, for that by default, but it does not. Of course, you can sideload uh, keyboards or you can download some from the Android market. There are some great options in there as well. Now, Verizon's is different in that it separates SMS and MMS from voicemail. So if you're in the all messages, you'll see all. If you scroll over to SMS, you'll see those. And if you scroll over to voicemail, you do have to have a subscription to visual voicemail, but you can see your messages there. Visual voicemail subscription, $2.99 uh, per month. So keep that in mind.